Okay, so brand new Blender scene. I'm gonna show you some cool time remapping that you might not have known existed in Blender. So, we all know, right, you can take in some images as planes with this golden little add-on here. Bring that guy in. Let's go right on over to, uh, let me bring in the video texture here. And I have this one here. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that guy in there. And just like you'd expect, hit play, Blender, here you go, plays back. Let me, maybe, uh, okay. Is that gonna play back a little faster? Material preview, not sure. But it's playing back as it goes through. Now, if I open up the shaders up here, we can see here that uh, this specific texture, right? 601 frames. In my scene, there's only 250, so we're not dealing with a cyclic issue, but that's okay. That doesn't matter here. What does matter is how we can actually get a little more control over the, the frames themselves. Okay, so for this technique, really what's important here is this offset number. Uh, the frames do not matter. So the frames, actually it's important that you set this to one because we're only gonna be dealing with one frame at any given time, right? What's important is what frame is that? This offset, right? We can choose how, like, you know, we're gonna offset the video texture to which frame. So that's what's important. And literally, guys, check it out. Just keyframe this offset. And then if I go in here to the graph editor, so grab this, uh, this is kind of difficult sometimes to make sure you're selecting the thing. Select your texture, it's up here, bam, grab the offset. Okay, back into the 3D view. So you can see this thing here. Now obviously when I hit play, nothing's gonna happen because right, we changed that number from 601 to one. So no matter what, it's only ever gonna be one frame but it's gonna be this frame here that I move through time. And what's important is that now we're in the graph editor with this number and we can keyframe this. So a couple things. One, if I just grab the offset, hit end, open this up. If I just add in a generator here, bam, we're back to square one, right? Because this is saying for y equals mx plus b, right? One x plus zero, which is saying y equals x, which is what we started with, right? Y equals x for every one frame we go, you progress one frame in the video texture. If I hit play, we're back to what we had, right? But you can you can keep working this. So I can say, hey, I want it to be y equals 2x. So now it's twice as fast. If I hit play, your video texture is twice the speed now, which is actually pretty cool. So that's just the start of it, right? There's so much more we can do. You know, forget the generator. Now let's get some cool stuff. So grab a noise texture, I mean, sorry, grab a noise modifier. And you can't see it now because it's super small. And usually when you're working with noise modifiers in Blender here, it's um you're dealing with smaller values anyway, like things like less than five, you know, one to zero type values. But in this case, we're actually gonna have this strength be a little higher. So make this kind of high so you can see what's going on. And if you want to, you don't want the offset to be below zero. I mean, I guess you can. It's not gonna I don't know. I guess it, I guess it'll just loop back if you have cyclic selected. So automatically when I hit play, you can sort of see it's going back and forth and you can use these textures to control this. So, okay, so I'll scale this thing up here. So like, you know, five, and now you see it's going back and forth and it's following this noise te this noise modifier. I keep saying noise texture, but yeah, that's cool. It's, so it's some really cool time interpolation that you can work with here. Now you can change this to add. So it's gonna add from whatever keyframe this is. And then if I were to go later down this timeline and copy this one and put it here, I can then move this guy around and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna do that little bouncy movement throughout my thing. So maybe I wanna progress progress down the timeline with with this sort of, sort of noise modifier-like movement and it's just gonna sort of seesaw its way the whole way down. And, you know, get creative. Like, you know, you can use this for a million things. So, okay, so here's, here's one other thing, right? So let's delete this keyframe here. And then say, you know, you don't want to use a, uh, you don't want to use a noise modifier because that's a little crazy, but so say you don't want to have that noise modifier, but you want to have something else looking cool, uh, built-in function right here. You can, you can, um, use these built out of functions. So let's change this to like 0.2. So this is just going to build a nice sine wave and amplitude. Again, like I said, with the strength, you want to keep this number high to see it. So 25 here, if I just change this to additive. It's gonna, it's gonna add it to the current keyframe. So now, this is gonna oscillate back and forth on the sine wave. Um, every 0.2, I, I believe, I don't know if that's seconds or what this re reference is, but uh, it's out of one. So 
if I just hit play, you'll see it just oscillates back and forth. Very slow, it's five frames per second. I guess I need like a 480p video to, to work with this. Okay, yeah, but the point is that it, it, it will oscillate, and especially in the final render, so you have nothing to worry about. It's not, maybe it won't play back at full speed, that's one sort of issue you're dealing with. Okay, but yeah, maybe that's just another cool little thing you might want to work with uh, using these functions. And another, and just look through these, there's some really cool modifiers over here, and don't be afraid to explore. Like, stepped interpolation, this is cool, this is like, I don't know, many people don't talk about this, but... If you want to make something move and it sort of have like a glitchy look to it, you can change the step size. So like change it to every five frames, five, it'll, it'll move along this path. So if I hit play every five frames, it's going to change this number. I really wish this was playing back in a more uh, real time, or maybe it is real, no, it's not. But I mean, you can see right here on the, on the graph what it is doing. So again, change the step size, let's go to 15. And then every 15 frames, it's going to sort of sample the frame that this, it's, so you're talking about two frames at once where it gets kind of confusing, but every 15 frames of the blender scene, it's going to sample the frame that this is referring to for your video texture, and it's going to keep it there. So stepped interpolation, some cool stuff going on, and this generator, actually a lot of people don't know this, and I, I can go into more detail on this later, but what's cool about this is is if you change this poly order number, this is sort of like, you're talking about x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth, because really right now it's x to the first power. If I change this to two, it's gonna be a parabola if I make this one. So right, we get a parabola because it's actually one times x to the squared rather than zero times x to the squared. If I take this away, take this one away, I can do x cubed, you know, you just remember this from algebra, these different formulas you can sort of start building out in the graph editor just using this generator. And this thing here, by the way, uh, this is expanded polynomial, which basically just means this is uh, your equation fully expanded out. I don't know if you remember, maybe you'll remember back to uh, algebra class when they would have you factor these. You could switch over to a factorized polynomial and you could see here the factored form. It's just a different way of visualizing this, but really you can build out the same equations just how you'd like. I prefer the expanded polynomial because it's it's just easier for me to understand. Okay, let's let's try something different. Here's one thing that I think is really cool. So if you're doing VFX and, or maybe you wanna just add this into your 3D scene, muzzle flares for guns, right? So maybe you do, maybe you don't. I'm gonna go in here to my Action Essentials 2 pack, which a lot of people have, um, and I'm just gonna grab this automatic fire. Now this is super cool, right? Because if I play this back, come on, bam, now it's playing full speed. It fires off a couple rounds and then it stops for the remainder of this. So no matter what happens, you're only gonna get those first shots at the front. Now, you can be strategic and use the offset and the frame start to pick where it shoots. But if you wanna be a little more precise with, with your motions here, you can do the same technique over and over so again we have it takes 34 frames to complete this so I'm just gonna set this to one again we're dealing with one frame ever and I will keyframe the offset value now let's open up the graph editor I did it again and make sure you select your video texture here then open up the graph editor okay cool now it's right here just expand this out to you see offset and here it is so remember we said it took 34 frames to complete so I'm just gonna move this back here to the beginning and then what we can do here is so if I hit play or I'll go to 34 frames and then I'll copy this keyframe paste it and if I just move it up here up on the y-axis 34 then I can zoom in here well we'll see if I play back is it does pretty much the same thing except this stops here at 34 but this is okay because this is where it stops right there's no frames after 34 but here's where this gets cool so as opposed to it stopping forever I could just say oh yeah we shoot the gun here except it shoots you know they reload in this time but copy paste now it shoots again later here 
you just have to be careful of of it playing back in reverse here so in order to sort of fix that just go to the frame where it starts one to the left and just copy this basic keyframing stuff right but now look your video texture plays twice and you have incredibly fine control over where does this start and actually yeah no yeah and then you have super fine control on the graph editor if you want to you can even line these up with other motions happening rather than just eyeballing it in the shader editor so yeah some cool techniques this is a cool little quick tip on how to time remap your video textures right here within blender um, have fun with this and see what else you can come up with because I think this is this can really help out my workflow so hope to see what you guys can create with this thanks for watching